What are you doing here? You go, you've already seen this. Change the channel. Change the channel. Yes, I love Reservoir Dogs, but is it because it's Tarantino's first film? Is it because the iconic cast? Or is it because of timeless scene after timeless scene? Now, I often question myself how he got this many A-list or just iconic actors in this movie. It actually makes no sense. There's Steve Buscemi, there's Tim Roth, there's the guy that plays Mr. White. I mean, there's just a bunch of people in this movie and it's kind of crazy. I wish I could pinpoint it, but um, that's the goal of today's video. We're gonna break it down a bit and we're gonna list a couple of our favorite shots and scenes. So uh, first off, we're gonna start out with Mr. Pink and Mr. White right in the beginning. Now this scene takes place obviously in the first act and it's in the warehouse, you know, where most of the movie takes place. And they just met up after the jewelry heist went completely wrong and we start out with Mr. Orange bleeding out on the ground and Mr. White's like holy shit and then Mr. Pink comes in and he's convinced there's a snitch, a rat, he, he's totally convinced that someone ratted them out because of the way the cops were set up and Mr. White doesn't, he, he disagrees, he does not think there's a rat. And the reason this whole scene and segment is so good is because it displays their characters right away, like it shows how stingy and on the nose Mr. Pink can be and is. He's almost calculated, he's a little too stupid but he's also, like he's very calculated calculated and he wants to keep his hands clean and they tell you this by having these two characters argue about their names so mr white would gladly give up his actual name to mr pink while mr pink would not do the same this just shows both their characters right away mr white's like yo yo you want to know my name bro i'll give it to you right now like fuck this mr white mr pink shit mr pink goes no way dude like we can't get caught i'm not getting in trouble i'm not breaking the rules so this also leads to mr pink being down to ditch mr orange he says he's pretty much good as dead even though this guy's bleeding out on the ground and i mean this just shows that mr white actually has a heart and he's got some morals and he's like we can't just leave this dude to die so these two characters are on totally separate pages but i love this shot right here specifically it's a bit longer of a shot but um it's just a slow zoom on mr white's face this is showing us that he's thinking i know that that sounds stupid like obviously this guy's thinking but it's just it's portraying his panic and he realizes that he told mr orange his name like right around here is where he realizes oh shit i told the bleeding out guy my name which is a huge problem because now if they save mr orange or take him to a hospital he knows mr white's name and could snitch and obviously they're going to want to lock this dude up because he was part of the huge bank heist where a bunch of cops died and this creates huge internal conflict with mr white himself because dude fucked up and now Mr. Pink's gonna let him hear it, and it leaves us with one of the most iconic scenes, one of my favorite scenes of all time in any of these Quentin Tarantino movies. You're acting like a first year fucking thief. I'm acting like a professional. They get him, they can get you. They get you, they get closer to me, and that can't happen. My second favorite scene of this movie is the Mexican standoff. Now this scene is the climax of the film because this film is almost a slow burn to this exact moment. So in this moment, everybody is confused. Mr. White is defending Mr. Orange. Like I said before, Mr. Orange is the guy bleeding out on the ground. Mr. Pink doesn't really know. He just wants to survive at this point. And then we have nice guy Eddie coming into the mix angry because Mr. Blonde is dead. And Mr. Blonde was one of the only guys that Eddie and his dad were like 100% in on this mission. And Mr. Orange is trying to say, hey man, he was going to rob you guys and everything, so I, I had to shoot him. When in reality, you know, Mr. Orange is the undercover police officer, so everything is just boiling to a point. I, I explain that in a confusing way, but it doesn't really matter because it birthed one of my favorite scenes in this movie. Check it out. You're telling me that now that this man is free and we're making good on our commitment to him, He's just gonna decide, out of the fucking blue, to rip us off? Why don't you tell me what really happened? 
It's just so menacing. Now, I know people are like, just because he's yelling doesn't mean he's a good actor. I know. But I just love the eye acting and the absolute psychotic. Like, he's having his psychotic break. He's done with the situation. I just think it's awesome. But pretty much everybody in this scene has an opposing view. So this is where the stakes get really, really high. And at the beginning of the scene, nice guy Eddie murders the cop that was held hostage by Mr. Blonde. So, whatever, man. Everything comes together. Everybody has opposing views. And we just get to this scene. Joe, the boss, Eddie's dad, comes into this scene, and he's like, oh, yeah, this guy's an undercover cop. Nope, I'm 100% sure Mr. Orange is the undercover cop. Nope, I'm just gonna kill him. Mr. White's like, nope, nope, you can't kill him. He's a good guy. Trust me, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. And it just sucks seeing Mr. White hardcore defend Mr. Orange because we, the audience, know that this guy's an undercover cop. And we, we're we're just watching Mr. White get completely, completely swindled here. So the tensions are rising. They peek out. Nice guy Eddie just starts yelling about something. Then boom. I mean, they, they just shoot each other. They all fire off. And the really messed up part about this is Mr. White drops down to Mr. Orange to kind of comfort him. And he's like, hey, man, we're going to have to do some time. But uh, we, we went through this together. And then Mr. Orange is like, I'm a cop. I'm sorry, bro. I'm a cop. And then Mr. White just defeat. He just says defeat on his face he lets out a loud gruntle noise and that's pretty much it i mean you just feel devastated mr white gotten swindled now he's getting shot at and he's just gonna be in prison for life or he's gonna die his fate is fucked if mr orange survived he's just a badass undercover cop but um those are my two favorite scenes in reservoir dogs now it's julian time i also love reservoir dogs some people might say the movie begins characters die the movie ends and nothing changes i disagree my first tarantino film was pulp fiction back when i was 16 from then on, I was officially hooked on this mixture of fast-paced action, engaging dialogue, and glorious visual storytelling. One of my favorite things to do when I find any new director is to study their early work. If I could, I would talk about every scene of this movie, but let me tell you how the first and final scene contract each other. We start out with our cast having an interesting conversation at the diner. Mr. Pink is slick, doesn't crack, professional, and above all, doesn't tip, like somebody I know. Mr. Brown, Tarantino, is talking his ass off and it's fun to see a director laugh at their own script. Mr. White takes control and Mr. Blonde has terrifying foreshadowing with his first line. Then they strut off to begin their biggest job. Fast forward right after the Mexican standoff, Mr. Pink exits the scene with his briefcase. Did he get caught? Sadly, I think so. There were too many signs pointing to it. Then, with his remaining strength, Mr. White crawls over to a dying Mr. Orange because all he wanted to do was what he thought was right. But in the end, Mr. Orange finally confesses that he was a cop the entire time, leaving Mr. White to groan in anguish and in sorrow to not only fail the job, but in his beliefs being destroyed. Reservoir Dogs represents human nature and how desperate it can be when a situation becomes dire. This film may not be Quentin Tarantino's best, but damn if it hasn't aged like fine wine.